and you are tapped into her sacred soul space. A safe space where we have awesome conversation, the ones that stir our hearts and expand our soul. We're super excited to have you today. And of course, I'm never alone. I always have my soul tribe with me. We have <laughs> Dr. Fisher, Yolande, Nat, and Beatrice. And of course, our beautiful guest, Sister Yaya. We are, how are you ladies? How are you ladies doing? Good? Are we excited about this topic? Yes. Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. We are so going to dive into um, healing generational curses, okay? And the topic for today is breaking generational curses, chromancy wisdom for healing your bloodline. This is a very deep topic that we want to just go right deep. into. Not even going to waste any time. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our beautiful sister Yaya. And sister Yaya is a Caribbean traditional herbalist specializing in maroon spiritual and herbal medicine and practices. Born into a family of special spiritualists and healers, sister Yaya has taken the rich romantic culture of Jamaica and Haiti in addition to the herbal wisdom of her ancestors to help others heal themselves. So yes. let's hear more about the Kromantu wisdom and the Maroon traditions and see how we can utilize that to help us to heal our generational curses. Welcome, Sister Yaya. We are super happy to have you. <laughs> Welcome, my girl. Yes. Oh, my girl. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, and oh my goodness. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to share this space. Thank you all for your, your time and your energy. Thank you for the invitation. And I just want to give thanks because everything we start with just gratitude. Gratitude is the attitude for healing. Gratitude is the attitude for success, for health, for abundance. So I just want to say thank you to you all that are listening now, who will watch the replay. Um, Spirit and myself are just thrilled to be here. And so today we want to talk about um, the, the love of, of our ancestors. We want to talk about the wisdom of our ancestors and how it can help us today to live better lives. As Marcia said, my name is Sister Yaya. I am the co-founder of Soul Tribe Heals, soultribeheals.com. And we do focus on traditional Caribbean healing and herbalism. And today we're going to talk about breaking those generational curses, y'all. Because guess what? Yes, A lot yes. of things that we're dealing with in our lives, it's not even ours. It's been inherited. Not even, ours. Not even okay. ours. So what can we do mm -hmm. to clean that up? So that we can have a better relationship, so we can have better mental health, better physical health. And today we're going to talk about that right now. But before we do anything, yeah. as always, how we start something kind of determines how everything goes. Let's just take a couple breaths together, breathing in deeply through our nose and exhaling through our mouth. And the reason I like to do this because it does a couple of things. It puts us in a receptive mode so we can receive, but it also calms down the parasympathetic, um, parasympathetic nervous system, that part of us that's kind of riled up that can be easily triggered, that's often going, going, going. It calms that down. So we can tune in to the beautiful frequency of the energy that's here, but most importantly, to your energy. So that's why yeah, we like to do yeah. this. Work. So what we're going to do together and at your own pace, just relax, you know, nothing in your hand, nothing in your feet, nothing crossed, and just relax your body a little bit, relax your neck a little bit. Because a lot of times we hold in energy and emotions there, you know, just kind of just relax ourselves. Just, Whatever thought you have is let it pass through your mind. Don't hold on to it. Let it be free like water. Then we're going to breathe in deeply through our nose and exhale through our mouth. And we can begin on three. One, two, and three. Breathe in. Exhale. Another big breath. One more time, big breath. And exhale. We are releasing all things that no longer serve us. And we are inviting the presence of the divine to join us at this time. We ask our highest self to be present. We ask our spirit team and our angels and ancestors and spirit guides to be with us now as we hear this information, that we allow it to ruminate in us, to change us, to transform us. 
And we want to say thank you to the divine love that is here right now, filling our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our spaces. And as we breathe and relax, we allow that love to flow to every area of our lives, pouring the elixir of love and healing in every area that it touches. And we say thank you to the wisdom of our ancestors, the wisdom of the universe, of the divine love. We say thank you. So today we want to talk about healing these generational curses because a lot of what we see going on in our families, a lot of what we're experiencing in our lives is an energy. It is an energy. So what I want to talk to you about, what is Cromanti, so you get an idea of where this idea, this philosophy, this healing comes from. And then I want to share with you how to identify generational curses in your life and the lives of others, how they show up. Because sometimes we normalize things that can have some indication there's some unaligned, misaligned energy somewhere. So we're going to talk about those things as well, how they impact us in our daily lives so we can see outside of ourselves how this energy can be operating and also what we can do right now, right now, today, to change the trajectory of this energy, not just for ourselves, because when we do this work, we can heal seven generations after us, and we can heal seven generations before us. So there's issues with your family, your children. Don't worry about it. You do what we say. Do you? Do your work? Mm-hmm. And that energy mm-hmm. spreads across because you are the spoke and the wheel. You are the, the focus. So we're working easier. This is the way of our ancestors. Not the, the hustle, the, the hollering, the, the moving, the grinding. No, 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 no. That is working in the flesh. But our ancestors had the wisdom to know if we tap into the divine source and speak the word and set the intention and let go, then the spirit can yes, sweep yes. in and do the work. And this is mm, the remembering mm. of ourselves. This is our remembering of what's going on. When we see things going on in the world, we do the same philosophy. We don't have to go out and use this because it wears our bodies down. And as women who are listening, our bodies aren't meant to run down like that. That's too much masculine. We're meant to meditate and attract, mm. attract. So there's not a lot of movement. It's a lot of stillness. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. There's yes. a lot of prayer. Mm. I love that. Yes. So we're not burning out. We don't burn mm-hmm. out. We're not yelling at the kids. We're not driving. No, because we're outside of our element. Mm-hmm. So this is a remembering mm-hmm. of our superpower, of our grandmothers, how they made things happen. Yeah. We didn't been happy. Grandma's praying three o'clock in the morning. Y'all know she said a prayer for so and so and she had a dream. Y'all know it's that same energy we're going to talk about today. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Love, it. Love, love it. it. love it. Love it. Love it. Thanks. So what is <laughs> wisdom? What is it? I mean, it's not a word that's commonly used. Kermati right, itself right. is a word um, of the spirit language of the Maroons of Jamaica. You'll find them in Suriname as well. It comes from the langu- language group of the um, the Akan group. So you have Fante, you have Tree, or Tui, you have um, Asante. So it's a, it's a linguistic yeah. group, yeah. but it's also a cultural group. With this cultural group comes spiritual practices, comes norms, right? We're talking about the West, <laughs> West part of Africa, modern day Ghana today, right? So this idea of Kermanti and Kermantiism takes its root back to, they say, colonial times, pre, post. I don't like to use slavery because that's, that's just a little dot in time. There's so many, uh, there's so much history. Right. Yeah. Okay. You better say it. But to put it in context mm-hmm. for yourself and for the viewers, you get an idea um, of how far this thing has gone back, this wisdom has gone back. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. my particular family are of the windward maroons. And so we practice, um, certain spiritual cultural, um, practices to help us. That has always helped us to be autonomous. That has always Mm -hmm. helped us to Mm -hmm. be free. Um, if you know anything about maroonage, the maroons, wherever you find them around the world, you can find them in Brazil. You can find them in Mexico, where I am right now. They're all over groups of people. Yes. And Panama. Costa Rica, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all over. (laughs) Dr. Key is like, yes. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And so there were groups of people, maybe from different backgrounds, and in my case, different backgrounds, who came together and said, you know what? We ain't about this foolishness. We're not about this this violence. We're not about enslavement. We're not about oppression. Whatever whatever it is. But we form our communities based on values, based on certain um, structures. And this is how we elevate ourselves spiritually because everything happens in the spirit first. Mm -hmm. So Mm Kermanti has Mm -hmm. a a sacredness to it. It has a little bit of exclusivity to it. 
Um, it's mostly mm-hmm. a oral mm-hmm. tradition where I've learned mine from my grandfather and other people most likely learned it from uh, an elder. It's not widely smoke- mm-hmm. spoken on the island now, but there's some places in Moortown and different places you can find um, a lot of words and a lot of semblance of it still existing. But this is the power mm-hmm. we're going to mm-hmm. talk about today. We're going to talk about the spiritual aspect yeah. of it as it relates to breaking generational curses. Yeah. 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 Um, powerful. Yes, it's, it's extremely powerful. It's extremely powerful. Thank you. And so um, some of the things like I talked about earlier, issues that we face in our lives are not ours. If we look in our family, let's mm-hmm. say you look on your mother's side and look at maybe say all the females on your mother's side, what are some of the themes you can say that you see amongst the women? For example, what are some things that can show levels of misalignment? Um, It could be all the women are angry. It could be the women are perpetually single. 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 Okay, Yolanda. (laughs) That's something. Single. What else could you say? Barren. Barren. What's that? Barren. 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 Yes. Infert- okay. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Mm-hmm. Unhappily married. Mm, unhappily married. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or not, not knowing how to identify, identify who they, they really are. Right. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. Basically, yeah. 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 the individual yeah. that's in their life. Right. Right. Masculine, masculine energy. Lots, of, Lots masculine of masculine energy. energy. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Strong and independent, which is the same thing as that masculine. Yes. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And I see that all in my family yeah. as well. And that's kind of what led me on this journey to ask why. Why? Why are we like this? How did we get here? Why are all the women single? Why are they hyper masculine? Why are they super mean? <laughs> Why are they all sick? Why is everything? What is it to this thing? So we call these things, some people will call them. Uh, generational curses, things in the bloodline, but indeed they are. And the way to identify them is because it's going to be a, um, a misalignment, something that's not in alignment. You're going to see it as a problem and it's recurring. If you see it more in about two generations, then you know it's probably somewhere in the bloodline. These things occur when one generation um, experiences this thing and is unable to heal it for whatever reason. Um, so this is one thing we'll learn about is compassion and lack of ju- and no judgment and forgiveness because if you know we live in this life we only could do the best we can for our incarnation but sometimes our our people miss the mark they may know may not have the courage to change whatever the reason is it doesn't really matter but it's passed down and then when you feel it or when one feels it in the family that is an indication that one you have the ability to heal it whether you feel it or not at that moment don't matter don't matter you have the ability to heal it in yourself and two you may be called to be a healer in general. Mm. You may be. Yes. Yes. Because your soul is sensitive enough and it's picking up this energy and it may have made you lose your mind a couple mm. times. It may have put you in a hospital a couple times. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, you know, Yaya, does that mean, is that, is that when you, because you, you know, they talk, they talk about, about in, in each family, there's, family, there's one, that's one that's called to break the curse. curse. If you're, if you're experiencing that, that, is that, is that, is that an indication that you're the one who's called to break this generational curse? Pretty much so, pretty much. Yes. And you'll know it because it'll be so intense. Mm-hmm. It will almost cripple your life. Like you might not be able to work. Yeah. You might not yeah. be able to yeah. Yeah. eat. You might not be able to take care of your kids, take care of yourself. It will be so intense that it will interrupt your daily life. And you're like, oh my gosh, I really mm-hmm. got to do something. Is that, is that the same, same thing, thing uh, when, people when people say, say you're, you're the black sheep of the family, family in some ways, ways because you're changing the directory of, of what, what your family is used to doing correct. because you identify, identify these things, things and you're, and you're like, like, I'm not going to do this anymore. So you, so you try, try to change. change. You try to, to in, in, in some, some ways, ways, even educate, educate yes. what we did what wrong. You know what I'm saying? Girl, you in my house, girl. And another thing that happens when you do that is because when the energy, okay, let's say this is the family and on this way but you go against it what you do you also show them as a mirror yes. of who they really yes. are yes and so yes. Like, oh, Ooh. wait a minute we really are drunks oh wait a minute we really do allow like sexual assault in our family oh wait a minute hold on hold on hold on and now you call that energy oh. out because you're going to learn oh. the first step of healing that i'm going to talk about is awareness so when you start to heal you become aware yes. of these things right like wow and some people don't want yes. to be aware because it's so painful or it's comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. Right. That's okay. Let them have that. But spirit is calling you out of it. And you have to, and when you work with the answer, they kind of pull you out because they know you have the potential to do it. 
number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, mm -hmm. they know the blessings that come along with it and that you're entitled to that because it's your birthright. But we got to get that mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. right. away so you can they can get you to that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. sometimes it feels kind of painful, but they know what they're doing. And we're going to talk about ancestors because they are so important to this work. We cannot leave them out. We cannot not, leave not. them out. I can't wait. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. We're right. <laughs> yes, please. We're already, we're already talking about a lot of what we what's in here. So continue yeah, to yeah. ask your questions so we can um because we're just it's yeah, a conversation yeah. and an so, exchange. So, yes. One of the things I want to know so we can differentiate is that how do you how do you know that? that the action, the action is generational, is generational uh, uh, base versus, versus or generational curse base, base versus it's, it's one that one is, that is a part of part your, of your soul, that's soul that's missing that you need to reclaim. This is something just directly with you. You understand? You understand? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. How, how can we be able to I, you know, I, talk, you know, about talk about that? I want to know how can we pinpoint and identify that this is definitely generational curse base versus this is definitely a martial thing that I have to work on to get back that soul piece that was taken from me in past life or something. Okay. Great question. That's a wonderful question. Yes. You can identify it if it's generational curse based by looking in your bloodline in your family. That's number one. You always look home. Mm -hmm. So look at your mother, mm -hmm. your aunties, mm -hmm. your uncles. Look, look there and see if you can see if it's not exactly the same thing, but something very similar to it. Because energies are kind of grouped together, mm -hmm. right? Like guilt, shame are kind of together. Um, fear, um, mm -hmm. apprehension are kind of together. So look for themes, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can say, okay, these are energetic themes. Now, I may not be exactly that's running. Now, if it's mm -hmm. Marsha base or um, Dr. Kia base or Beatrice base, then look at your own life. Look at the events that have occurred. Mm -hmm. But still, there is something that made you make that decision that made something happen. But still, there is something that made that misaligned you. Still, right? Mm -hmm. And if you go to that, okay, what made me get with this guy? Who I know, what what made me do it? Okay, I know my mama be doing it, my auntie. What made me do it? Like I know better, but I'm still doing it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. another way you know it's a generational curse. You know better, but you're still mm -hmm. doing it. It's almost like second. It almost feels like second nature sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It Girl. almost feels that way, but it's not. It's second because it's not the first. It's second, mm. but it's not the first. Because oh. in your natural self, you are divine. In your natural self, you would naturally choose things that will support your energy, that will bring you love, that will bring you abundance, joy. In your natural first self, anything outside of that, in the realm of that, that we picked up from childhood and picked up from life is outside of us. And that becomes what they call the second nature. That second nature is where we examine these this energy of generational curses. It's not really who you are. It's not who your mom was. It's not really who your daddy was. It's who they've chosen to continue to be. Because they maybe, mm. maybe they didn't have the awareness of it. Maybe the ancestors said, okay, it ain't going to be them. It's going to be you. We don't know why. But we know yeah. when it comes to us, we have to deal with it. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mercy. Mercy. Wow. Oh, that's good. Your question, Marcia? Say Did that what? answer your question? Give it oh, yes. oh, yes. Definitely. Definitely. Because, definitely. 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 Um, you know, I even thought about habits. habits. You know? You know? Habits, habits can be associated, associated with um, generational, generational curses. curses. Mm -hmm. Versus, Versus you, it's it's something, it's something, especially when you struggle to release, to release it. it. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So, so you know, that, you know, that, that was something that came to mind when I when I was thinking about this topic. And I said, I have to definitely ask this question so that you I can have a clear understanding. Yes. So definitely. That's beautiful. That's deep. And if we could, uh, if anyone wants to throw out one generational curse, we can pull one apart. If you, I mean, I have my notes here, but if you want to do somewhere, we can pull something apart on how we can look at something in our lives and get down to the energy of it. If anyone wants to. So can, I, I, can, can, I, can, I, can I do that? I'll probably put myself, put myself out, out there, there, but that's, that's okay because it's not the first. first. So, you know, my mom had three of us, three different fathers. Mm-hmm. She always said that she does not love. Like, she had her money, she made her money, and she wasn't really in love. She really just had sex to have her children because she oh, she wanted kids, mm -hmm. right? I realized in my life, I don't know if it's an ancestral thing because I've, I've traced ancestors, and um, I don't know if it's a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. And then my mom, this is her decision, and now for me, I'm married, but I, I have this thought that 
There's too many people in this world to love just one. Mm -hmm. I I continue have continue to have that thought, right? I've had you know my husband and I've been through infidelity. Um, we've been through that 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 you know we didn't want to. I did it for revenge, but it still happened, right? But even as we are beautiful, I still have this thought that it shouldn't be just a one partnership way. You know what I'm saying? And I know, and although I'm happy, I'm still thinking, why people think that this is supposed to be? It feels unnatural with billions of people in the world. So my thought is, am I tripping? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because how could someone who's happy still feel this way? Now, it's my choice to go ahead and creep, creep, creep. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's still something that continuously is in my head. Mm -hmm. Ask Marsha and Yolanda. I always come to them like, yo, I don't know if I, I don't know why I feel like I should be, you know what I'm saying? So is that something considered a generational curse because what I've seen my mom do, and it's not that I don't love or what have you, but I feel like there's too much love to give. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what do you think about that? Is that considered that um, clean that up before Yaya answers. Wait, 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 wait. Before Yaya answers, I want to make sure our viewers understand. Kia is faithful to her husband. Hello, we're just talking about thoughts. Okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the thoughts bother you, it continues to come up, and I have to continue to say, No, that's not it. To be very honest, my husband and I have had this conversation plenty of times. You know, right. something that is just in my head. Right. So, but is, could, could that be considered a generational curse where uh, even though it seems cultural, it can still be a curse? Right. Now, I'm glad you said that because a lot of things that are cultural can us actual can be wounding could be a curse. You know, a lot of things mm. about our culture, like how oh, we do this, this, a lot of that stuff is. First, now here's 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 the thing. To be honest with you, Dr. Kia, and I'm gonna be 100 percent honest. You know, I like that. Go when ahead, it comes, because you mentioned relationship. When it comes to relationship, you we can do relationships in so many different ways, right? Right. right. So I have mm -hmm. I have to pull this apart because it's not it's not a straight answer, right? Um, okay. Some people may have ancestry, may have history of um, the poly relationship, and there's nothing wrong with it because now we're judging, or we're not here to right. judge. If that's right. where the energy flows and you have it, then that's where it is. When it, when right. it starts, so that's that. Um, the question I have to ask is, is it bothersome? Within the contract of what you and your husband, you could say yes, that it will be. Mm -hmm. And then since that's the case and it's called a misalignment where you are right now, a misalignment, that's always going to be your key. Alignment, 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 always. Right. You don't know, right. Right. go back what puts you in line. Right, and then you right. don't know the answer. So I'm never the one to say yes, no, or, or no. But it could be because of your mother's energy and you've been in the same household and her thoughts and you be in the same household. Maybe when she was pregnant with you and her thoughts at that time, those waters she programmed, Ooh. right? Because our waters are programmable. Mm. That's why we always say speak to the waters. Okay. You're trying to change your child, speak to their waters. That's why people used to lay hands on to program belly, the waters, belly. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your waters could have been programmed that way which has made mm. you the beautiful person that you are. So number mm. one, I would say, yes, if yes. you ever felt any judgment about it, just whatever. No, I've been past right? that, girl. That's yeah. why I could talk to my husband. Yeah. 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 And that's beautiful. That. And yeah. that's part of the healing too. Do you ever mm. say, you know, I see it. I recognize it. Mm. It don't control my life and it don't right, put me out right. of alignment. I right, can have right. these thoughts because I have a lot of thoughts, truth be told. I had a very abusive mm -hmm. childhood. I had a lot of thoughts. But am mm -hmm. I acting on them? Am I swimming in them? Is it taking mm -hmm. me out of alignment of who I am? Mm -hmm. No. So yeah, I can see that curse that's there. Yeah, yeah, I see you, I see you. But you're not running this show. I'm running yes. this show. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. I like that. I like how you put that. Because and, and it's so funny you said that because like if we go back when my mom she she married to my she got married to my eldest brother's father, father just to just get out, to get out house the house in jamaica, jamaica move mm -hmm. to america but they were they never, were never together. together everything mm -hmm. was convenient because i want to do what i have to do but i'm not trying I'm not to hear no relationship, relationship or whatever right. and, and i feel like you said i lived with her i saw it i felt it and maybe that's the energy that i'm feeling from and i'm feeling but whereas instead of me saying oh i'm gonna live my life and do whatever you know I, I, I recognize, recognize it because it, because it does it feel does uncomfortable. Feel uncomfortable. So, when you right. Say, so when you say, right, 
not in alignment with who I am, I'm like, yeah, I do feel uncomfortable. I'm not, I don't feel guilty about feeling it, but I'm like, nah, that's not me. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do that, you know? So thank you for that. I appreciate that. That actually answered a lot of questions that I had regarding even my mom. Wonderful. And let me say this too, if you don't mind, Dr. Kian, let me know if I go too far. Um, so your mother was a lot in her root chakra and root deals with survival, hustle, grind. Yes, yes. Just most that, definitely. You know, and my mom's from Jamaica too. And she hear grind, 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 work, work, work. Yes. So you look in your life and you mm-hmm. see things maybe of overworking or um, being a little bit more. And maybe some of that energy that could be running from that. But your job, maybe, I don't know, your job may be to say, you know what? I'm going to live, instead of survival, I'm going to live in a thrival mode. I am going to flourish. I am going to enjoy. That would be the opposite of that energy, right? That is another way of breaking generational curses. Just choosing to say, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah. If we was in church still, still, I'd have threw a shoe at you. Because. Exactly. (laughs) You are speaking straight to my life. Because yeah. I've been I've in been survival, survival mode. Yeah. I grew up okay. in survival mode. I was a workaholic. Now, now I'm a princess. Yeah, you know you go. I'm Come on, princess Kia. Yeah. I still work. I'm still work. I'm a gangster at it. That's it's right. not it's overwhelming to me. You got what I'm saying? So you're right. You're right. You are definitely right. You're spot on. Spot on. Spot on. And that puts you, and that what it does to it also, because everything in the universe has to balance, right? So what that does, it also yeah, balance yeah. out your bloodline. So where it was too much masculine energy in the feminine side, this because you're doing what you're doing. You always get the immediate benefit off the dump, off the top. That's you. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you also change, the, uh, you balance out mm-hmm. that that energy because now you're getting in a higher vibration. Mm-hmm. So whatever's going on here, it, it helps to smooth things out. So whether your mom is with mm-hmm. us in this realm or not, or if you have children or anything that you parent, anything that's close to you, you now bring that energy to Everything that you touch now becomes in, in thrival mode instead of survival mode. And I have a list here, just, just because you said it, um, of <laughs> some, let me see if I still have it, of some characteristics when we know we're air surviving or when we're thriving. Oh, I think I took a picture of it. Okay, if I come mm, up, I like that. Like and it's a nice list okay. Okay. of like how we can see ourselves like, man, this is a survival thing. Or no, I'm in thrival mode because it's important to know because with feminine energy... We can't run, 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 run. It will burn us out. We will have gynecological issues. Someone mentioned infertility. Um, yes, we yes. Will, it will burn up our liver. When we're angry, our liver gets burnt up. Our liver has over 500 no functions to it. It can't afford to be burnt up. So that means our skin starts to break out. Our hormones get off. Um, our eyes get yellow. Our hands mm-hmm. get yellow. We can't break down our food. Our digestion is bad. So now we can't take in the nutrients that we need from what we eat because our liver is constantly angry. If it's inflamed, so we need to be on our herbs. We need to be mindful because every emotion that we feel, whether we feel it consciously or subconsciously, has an impact on our body. And in our tradition, we're taught to look at a person just off the sight, and you can see what's going on with them, just how their skin look, how their eyes look, um, how they show up. You can tell what organ is, um, is being affected. If there's an accident, just by seeing when that accident happened and where it's impacted on the body, can tell us the energy, the emotion that that person is misaligned with. If they're sick, wow. and any sickness, wow. it doesn't matter. It will tell us what is going on in that person's body and where how we can heal it. And this is how we can, another way we can get to generational curses as well. So things like high blood pressure, diabetes, they're not, they don't just run in the family because they run in the family. It's an energy. When we see diabetes, what the person or what the energy is saying, I need sweetness in my life. I need comfort mm, in my mm. life. I'm looking for it. So I may look for it in external ways and external behaviors, but this, I'm looking for the sweetness of life and I can't get it within myself and my relationship. So I'm reaching out for food. I'm reaching out experiences. And, and, and so we say, oh, a person that runs in the family. No, it's an energy. High blood pressure, depending on mm. where it's coming from. It's an energy. If there's yeah. too much worry and stress affects the kidneys, the kidneys affects the yes, heart yes. brothers and sisters. Then it's an energy. Let's get to the worry. What are we worried about? What's what's going on in our root chakra? We get to that, then we can get off the medication. Then our sleep will improve. Then we can lose weight without exercising and dieting. I'm telling you, we have to remember the ways of our ancestors. And these are the things we're talking about now in a circle of the ladies that are here and the souls that are who will listen to this and those who we cannot see in, with these physical eyes but are always present. There's healing available to us. But it requires for us to be in a still place. 
Yes. So part yes. of healing our, our generational curse is to be still and know that we have the courage that whatever comes up, whatever the universe shows us about our stuff that's so painful, either our childhood, our marriage, whatever it is, that you have the courage, you can sit with that without judgment, without shame, and start to heal that. Yes. But it yes. starts with the stillness. Silencing the noise. You know, you have your phone and all the apps are running in the back. You're like, man, why my battery is like going down? It's because the apps. Yeah. You got running yeah. down. I got yeah. Facebook. I got Cash Out. I got Venmo. You yeah. Them. Yeah. And then your phone speeds up. Your phone speeds up more efficient. You're the same way. Yeah. When you yeah. have apps running in the back from your childhood, Come from, on, the divorce, sis. from the homelessness, from the poverty, from the sexual yeah. assault. And yeah. I was meditating on this yeah. last yeah. night. And Spirit wanted us to talk about sexual assault. Sexual, sexual assault. What? Yeah. Sexual yeah. assault. Oh, sexual assault. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's go into let's that. Talk let's talk about, about how, how if we don't feel how that, how that it does that, that, that affect, affect us individually and affect our relationship and how, and how is the answer. answer. I want us to touch on the ancestors and how, and how you know they're here tapping on us for us to recognize that that's something you need to deal with. That's something you need to deal with, right? And then we can go into the healing aspect of it. Okay. And if I miss, I'm a, this file tra- tra- help me to stay on task, Marsha, because I can talk, 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 but just pull me back in if I miss. Yeah, you give it a lot of time. You can talk. You give it a lot of time. Anyway, I, 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 we want to talk, talk about, about how is it that, that these curses, curses generational curses, affect, affect you as a person, okay. as a woman, okay. and affect the okay. relationship for the okay. others. And then we talk about how we can heal. Okay. So depending on the generational curse, for example, let me show you how, let me show you how they can show up. And then, um, so we can see how it affects our bodies and everything around us, right? Mm-hmm. They can be in any type of physical mm-hmm. illness. It can show up in a physical illness. Uh, I talked about high blood pressure, mm-hmm. diabetes, cancer, any blood disorders. It can show up there as well. Mm-hmm. Feminine gynecological issues, um, cysts, tumors, fibroids, histories of um, hysterectomies. Mm-hmm. Um, that shows up there as well. Erectile mm-hmm. dysfunction. Uh, it can be an over-sexual um, appetite, or you could consider it or less, not as active, whatever mm-hmm. is your normal, but if it's over and under, um, and you feel like you just can't kind of get a hold of it. Mm-hmm. Any emotional mm-hmm. or mental illnesses, that includes depression, that includes anxiety. Mm-hmm. And we normalize these things because in the West, you know, it seems like everybody is suffering to some degree, but it's not. It's not, it's not, it's not in our natural energy. It's not who right. we came here to be, right? right. right. Schizophrenia, bipolar, OCD. Um, some people may even say attention deficit. You, you, anything that puts you out of alignment. So in that way, it also can show up on, on another level in sort of the sphere around you. For example, homelessness. And when I mean homelessness, I mean like chronic spouse of homelessness. You just can't seem to keep a house together. can't seem to stay still on a spot. That has a lot to do with mother wounding. Mm-hmm. Under mm-hmm. employment or unemployment chronically. We're talking about not being able to keep a job. And you maybe do everything right. But for some reason, you say people at the job don't like you. They ain't working out. You're going to job the job or think changing, changing, changing. That's another one. Um, I mentioned chronic illness, poverty. And what I mean by poverty, I mean um, lack of the essentials. Um, housing, food, transportation, clothes, like this, food, things that you need, like poverty. And of course, there's levels to it. You got poverty of the mind. Right. Of the emotion. It's... Th- Poverty, I can't, it's never enough. You never feel like there is enough. Mm-hmm. Never feel like you're worthy mm-hmm. of. That, mm-hmm. that contributes mm-hmm. to a poverty mentality. And some people have a lot of money, but they're still impoverished. They yes. don't enjoy. Yes. Yeah. There's no peace. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. There is no energy to start the day and excitement. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. they're leaking energy. They're leaking. And mother wounds can leak energy. I say mother wounds is probably the number one leak of energy. Always, the energy always. we've inherited from our mothers, from how she programmed our waters, the things she said to us, the things she did to us, which was only a reflection of ourselves. But as children, we don't know the difference. Mm-hmm, we just know mm-hmm. this, this is what mommy's doing to me or how I feel about it. But this is, she's our first teacher. Yeah. So a lot yeah. of what we deal with is things that we've picked up from her and from the feminine energy around us. And we've carried on in our life. This is how part of the generational curses can continue to, to mm-hmm. proliferate or how mm-hmm. they start. Mm-hmm. Um, usually what we learn in childhood. Okay, we also have um, incest, rape, molestation. These are lower chakra uh, woundings. They are really challenging to heal, and they take a lot of time and patience. We see that these manifest in our relationships when we um, can't express ourselves, feel like we can't be who we are, show up 
in the world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, when we feel like we take the back seat, that we can't be equal, when we feel like we have to hide who we are or conform or change to to accommodate um, others, when sometimes we could be in our in fear or in survival, we could be hyper aggressive. Yes. Because yeah. it's a fear that we're we're afraid, but to hide our fear, we could be hyper aggressive yeah. over. Yeah. So it could show up that way as well, mm-hmm. right? And and and, mm-hmm. and of course, it all affects our self esteem mm-hmm. and how we feel about ourselves is everything. Yeah. How you feel about yeah. yourself is if you feel wonderful, beautiful, energized, that's what you want to radiate to the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And our relationship, our jobs, our finances is a reflection of how we feel on the inside. Yes. So when I have my yes. clients, I tell them, you know, they say, oh, the money's not right. Relationship's not right. And we know we, everything kind of has its ebbs and flow. We're not talking about that. Right. We're talking about really significant right. things. I said, let's look on the inside. Where do you feel broken? Mm. Where don't you feel mm. worthy? Mm. Where do you feel like you're missing something or something's not right? Let's start there, mm-hmm. right? Because that's where mm-hmm. the money comes from. That's where the relationship comes from. That's where the, the wealth comes Desire. from. Desire. And that Desire. energy radiates out right. and it vibrates to everything around you. Mm-hmm. And if anyway, when mm-hmm. things get on that high vibration, your money, your bank account got to be good. Your relationship got to be good. Your health yeah. got to be good. But it, it, it starts here. Yeah. Yeah. So right? true. So, so when, true. So when we see it's the true. things going on in here, we can say, okay, this might be a generational curse via a mother wound or via a father wound or via a rape or whatever, whatever, however it comes. Mm-hmm. No judgment. Mm-hmm. But we get to that energy and we send it love and compassion first for yourself and mm-hmm. congratulate yourself for surviving. Yeah. We yeah. had to survive. Mm-hmm. You, pack, you give yourself a yeah. hug. <laughs> I love the mirror. I said, I love girl. you. Yeah, yeah, I love you. I love yes, you. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> and you love yourself. Yeah. Oh, true. Oh, true. Can, we, can, we, can we touch on some healing uh, modalities or some suggestions of how, how we, the first thing, thing if we, this is something, this is something new, new to us. us. Yes. Never, We've never done this before. Yes. before. Yes. This is the first this time they've been hearing it. Yes. What are some of my, you know, our viewers as to the first step they can do to heal the original person? Okay. Would that also be part of a soul jam? Okay. Would you consider, Would you consider that, that part, of part of a soul gem that you're living with, with our, our um, viewers? viewers? Yes. Yes. I would. I would. So actually, if it's okay, I have, um, it's four parts to it, but it's one gem. It's a big gem. Hopefully it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I love, uh, the big, I love okay. big gems. Yeah. Big gems. Big gems. Yes, big gems. Yes. Because we're beautiful <laughs> and we're bright and we're wonderful <laughs> and we're deserving of it. Right. Yes. So the first gem is one awareness. Yeah. Just the awareness of it. Just to be aware. Mm-hmm. Just you see it. You ain't got to do nothing. Just be aware that it's there. Second mm-hmm. thing is to offer yourself mm-hmm. love and compassion to yourself first. I love you. Mm-hmm. I forgive you. You're doing the best you can. I support you. I'm your number one. I'm here for you. You may have yes. to do that for your younger child. But yes. It's another conversation at another time, inner child. But be there for yourself. Mm-hmm. Three, mm-hmm. ask your most honorable and beloved ancestors for help. We ain't here to do this by ourselves. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. You call mm-hmm. upon the elevated ones, those who have done the work, those who are in your spirit team who guide you. Hey, help me with this. Help me to see. Help me to look, see, I know, so I can know what is going on. Give me the wisdom mm-hmm. and listen to them. Mm-hmm. And they will answer. Mm-hmm. This is one mantra that I use even for myself every day. And, and, and through postpartum, through losing our house, through all the stuff that's been happening in our lives these past couple months, I say to myself, I reclaim my divine power, and in my divine strength, in the wholeness of who I am, in this lifetime Mm -hmm. and in others, in this realm Mm -hmm. and in others, and this dimension and in others, I reclaim my divine power and my divine strength into the wholeness of who I am, in this lifetime and in others, in this realm and in others, and in this dimension because we're existing not just in this reality. We are existing in many levels. But parts of you may have been fragmented in another realm, but you don't want to leave that because you. So your birthright is to get your stuff. But the only way you're going to get your stuff is you got to seek it. Yes. Because it's not going to come to yes. you no other way. You have to command it. Yes. Because it's yours. Yes. Yes. And healing generational curses, healing your bloodline is taking back what belongs to you sure. and you do that through your sure. words and your intention and your practice of loving yourself first. I love it. I love it. Wow. I love it. 
I love it. Very rich. Very rich. Very rich. Thank you for that, girl. Thank you for that, girl. That was great. Great way of closing out. You just, listen, I'm trying to write down how to play with the vote. I really got to go to the school gym. I need that. I need that as part of my daily life. That is powerful. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing your time. Uh, uh, educating us for educating our viewers, viewers regarding, uh, regarding uh, generational, generational curses and how, how we can break that in our bloodline, how, how we can, how we can save our beautiful, beautiful children and their, and their children, children and their, their, their children, children, you know. You know? Um, this is, this good. is good. I don't know. What do you guys have to say, ladies? I don't know what you're checking, you know? I think it was awesome. I felt so much peace when she said it and I, and I could feel the energy of it just like wash over me. It was so beautiful. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm absolutely overwhelmed with like you feel like you feel me up so much. Much this morning, yes, like, yes. like I'm overwhelmed. I am overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Natty, you, oh, you, 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 yeah. you language that beautifully. Yeah. When, when, she when, when she was saying, saying um, um, I, reclaim I, I reclaim my divine power, power. Saying, when you start across saying the across the realms dimensions, and dimensions, dimensions I just, in my mind, it, in my mind I saw this picture me, of just me bringing back, bringing back, back pieces, pieces of myself, from, like collecting myself. I, f- I saw myself sitting on my little meditation mat and just collecting myself from all the dimensions and the realms. And oh, it was beautiful. That was so beautiful. That was so beautiful. What's so crazy is I've been doing the work. And when you're speaking it, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm doing that. Oh gosh, I'm doing that. Oh gosh, you know? Right. Oh, why am I tearing up? Oh, oh, I gotta get Kleenex. Uh, This topic is so. Oh my god. And we don't talk about it. And I I wonder why we don't talk about it as much. And you know what I think it is, especially for our people, especially our black women, brown, black and brown women. It's because it gives us power when we are cleared up. When we're healed, when we understand our generational curses and be the one to change. Once we sit in that seat and change, it brings us power. It's not easy. It's not easy. Because you got to confront something. Right? And confronting is never easy. When I talk to my clients, that's the hardest part. That's the first part. That's the hardest part. Right? Because you have to actually look yourself in the mirror. You actually have to say what you contributed, what contributed to you, and you're flabbergasted at what you find when you actually sit still. You know what I'm saying? And recognize those things. So I want to thank you because you confirmed so much and you did it so eloquently and energetically because I felt like this was a whole yeah. sermon <laughs> to my life. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? thank you for that. And whatever, yeah. and whatever, whatever you touch, whatever you touch from past to present, from past I bless present, them and I thank you for allowing yourself to be available. Because it's not to hurt people out there. That's, 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 that's so good. And we need more people and we need like you. So thank you. So thank you. Thank you. And bless you. Oh, girl, you move. Oh, girl, you move the room of healers, honey. Oh. I just want to say, if I could, oh, um, my can y'all hear me? Yes, mama. Yes, mama. Okay. Yes. I just want to say um, that as a person who has uh, recently walked the path of uh, tracing back to what happened in my bloodline, what happened in my generation or previous generations to me, and why has this affected me so much? Um, Just being on this journey, it gives you such clarity. Um, A lot of things that did not make sense now make sense. It's like solving a puzzle, if you will, of my life, and um, where I did not understand, where uh, it was overwhelmingly uh, just extremely painful, where I found myself going in a space of, you know, of hating people, um, that because of what the damage 
that they've done and the ripple effect and how they've affected my life, right? So what happens is that when you go back and you look at the previous generation, the previous generations and see what's happened to them and see what the commonalities are and what's been working against every generation, it gives you such clarity and it gives you such peace. Mm -hmm. And also it gives you great empathy so that you can reverse that, um, you know, that hatred, hatred or disgust or just anger. You, you feel just totally different about, about, about them and what happened to them and you gain empathy. So this journey has helped me to gain empathy for, for the previous generations and, uh, and to realize, wow, what an honor it is to have been the one that, that spirit decided to, I'm going to put enough in her to be able to overcome for, for, for that. So that her daughter doesn't have to fight these same demons so that, you know, her son doesn't have to fight these same demons and her grandchildren. I remember you saying at the beginning of when you started that this can affect seven generations ahead. My God, what an honor and a privilege. And I now understand why all hell has been breaking loose for 44 years, you know? And so yes. when, when, when you are breaking chains, yes. that's a lot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. so, um, so I appreciate, um, uh, this time that we had this morning and, uh, it's just been, it's been, it's been great. Yes. 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 I feel in my spirit when we bring you on to, um, to do our, our, to do our live. 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 This is to be this now in individual, individual pages. Yes. pages. Yes. Absolutely. And then she Absolutely. To the business, to the, business, to the, to the uh, yes. sacred soul. Yes. 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 Because yeah. I feel like, I feel like we would make a bigger, bigger, wider, wider audience, yes. audiences. People, people who are, who are not connected to, to us in that community. Yeah. community. Yeah, because because everyone, everyone needs, needs to hear this. Hear this. Everyone, everyone needs to hear you, you, you know you and, and um. Be able to share yes. share in your energy. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. Agree. Absolutely. Agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for joining us. And um, we hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. And your hobby. My love to you in Mexico. And we shall share here in from us. At least I'm going to order some of Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just want to say thank you all. I want to say you thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because this is can only come out when we put our energies together. Right. Right? We're all on different right. parts of our journey. And so I want to say thank you to you all that are here. Thank you to the divine that allow us to come together for this Absolute. time. Absolutely. This time, no matter what's going on, we are here. We are still pushing forward and doing the work that we are called to do. And I'm just so grateful for your energy. And um, just want another gem. This is out, you know, just surrender. This is super powerful. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. It is out super Come on now. Come on now. That's oh, my God. But Spirit put it on my heart to say the word. Maybe another time. You're going to be a regular here. Okay. I'm grateful. Deep bow, my sister. Deep bow. 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 Bye bye. bye bye. That was good. Oh, uh, that was good. Oh, bye bye. oh, somebody else do my part. I'm overwhelmed. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why was that so good? I had a lot of gems today. Um, one thing that she said was basically at the at the top of everything is do your work and the energy will spread. Do your work and the energy will spread. As long as we do whatever it is that is required of us, we have to first be aware. And the second thing is to be still in order to understand what that is, in order to do the work. Um, there's so many different yeah. signs, but the main thing to rem remember is whenever you feel like you're misaligned, you're out of alignment, when you see patterns happening over generations once and twice, that's how you know this is something that is a curse, an issue in our family. And so for you to break it, you have to be still, be aware, and do the work. 
So that's basically what she said. She had a lot of gems, a lot, 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 a lot of. Gems. I love how she um also advised that we need to identify the energy theme within her family. You know, this way it's gonna help us be able to pinpoint it easily versus um being all in our head. You know. Um, and mm-hmm. figure out what, just look for the theme. And if you see your auntie do this, your mom, your other aunt or whatever, it's like, okay, now you can step back and recognize that something is, is wrong here. Call on the ancestors, call on your angels, your guides, call on the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. Say, help me to understand how can I be the one to change, make a difference, um, in my family in that way. This is really awesome. I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. <laughs> just, I'm sorry. I'm uh-huh. all like, Yes. Okay. Anybody else want to drop a, a gem? A, I mean, a, not a gem. Anything on the soul plate before we close out? No. <laughs> oh, I'm overwhelmed. Okay. Okay, beautiful souls. Remember that you have to subscribe to her channel, like her page. You don't have to, but we're asking you nicely, please. <laughs> subscribe to her to YouTube channel and like her page. And, um, we are so happy that you took time to, to view our podcast and share it with your friends and your family, okay? That's what we're here for. We want to spread wisdom. And so until then, one love always, right? Bye. What good.